Good afternoon. So we are gathered this afternoon after having had uh, very lengthy deliberations with our colleagues, friends, and partners from the federal government of Somalia. And uh, after long and uh, incisive deliberations, we are here to make some announcements and uh, pronouncements with regards to those deliberations. Now, the two delegations on the Kenyan side was a high-level delegation of ministers led by the Cabinet Secretary for, Internal, for Interior and National Administration, Professor Kindiki, as well as the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, the Honorable Adan Dwale. On the Somalian side, the delegation was led by the Minister for Internal Security, Minister Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh Ali, the Foreign Affairs Minister, Ab Abshir Omar Jama, and the Defense Minister, Abdul Qadir Mohammed Noor. C.S. Kindiki, welcome. Kenya and Somalia announced on Monday an agreement to reopen their land border at three points by July 1st, officially closed since 2011 due to the insurrection of radical Islamist Shebarb. The announcement was made after a meeting in Nairobi between delegations of ministers from the two countries on issues of cooperation in security trade and movement of people. Last July, the two countries announced their intention to reopen the border, but this never materialized. Several kilometers long, the border between Kenya and Somalia was officially closed by Nairobi in October 2011 in an attempt to stem attacks. A radical Somali Islamist Shebab on Kenyan soil, including kidnappings of tourists and foreign aid workers. The Kenyan army intervened shortly after in Somalia to fight the Shebab. His forces and then joined the African Union force in Somalia in 2012, which chased the Shebab from the several of their strongholds. Since 2011, Kenya has been the target of several deadly attacks claimed by Shebab, in particular against the West Gate shopping center in Nairobi. September 2013, 67 people died. The University of Galisa, April 2015, 148 dead. And the hotel complex, the assist, January 2019, 21 people dead. Many other smaller attacks regularly target police and civilians near the border. The two countries, in theory, allies in the fight against Shebrab have tumultuous relations. Somalia has originally accused Kenya of interference, while the latter has accused Mogadishu of looking for a scapegoat for its internal problems. Somalia had severed diplomatic relations with Kenya in December 2020, restored in August 2021. The two countries have also urged over the course of their maritime boundary in the Indian Ocean. In October, the International Court of Justice, the main judicial body of UN, agreed with Somalia granting it a vast area of 100,000 kilometers rich in fish and potential hydrocarbons. Kenya officially rejected this decision. Thank you so much for watching. I don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We should be able to open the second border point, which is uh, Liboy Arhar uh, Doble on the Somalia side, and also 90 days from today, we also hope to be able to open a third border point, which is Kiunga Raskamboni in Lamu County. The first border point provides an entry point from the Kenyan side in Mandera County. The second border point provides an entry point from the Kenyan side in Garissa County. And the last uh, 
border point uh, will be able to provide an entry point from the Kenyan side in Lamu County. We are also in the process of relooking at a possibility of also adding a fourth border point which will give an entry point into Somalia from the Kenyan side in Wajia County. And that announcement will also be made in the coming days. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, as we further and deepen this dialogue of partnership and cooperation, it is my sincere hope that we shall continuously endeavor to enhance our cross-border experiences, activities, and engagements, keeping in mind the emerging security trends and dynamics paradigms that transcend national, regional, and continental boundaries. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to thank the distinguished delegation from Somalia, led by the Somalia Minister for Internal Security, Minister Mohammed, and the other two ministers who are with him, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Minister for Defense. I also want to thank my brother, Minister Eden Duale of Defense, and all the senior government officials who have made it possible for us to arrive here. It has taken the hard work of technical uh, senior officials of the two governments for us to reach the point where we have reached. I now want to yield the floor to my counterpart, the Internal Security Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia to make a few remarks, and after that we shall end this media briefing, and unfortunately today we will not be able to take your questions uh, because we are constrained. Welcome, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, uh, CS, uh, Professor Kituru Kindiki. Uh, Excellencies, Professor Kiduri Kindiki, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Interior and National Administration. His Excellency Adan Barredu Ali, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Defense. My fellow Cabinet Ministers from the Federal Republic of Somalia, Minister Abshir Omar Jama, and Minister Abdulgadir Muhammad Noor, Permanent Secretaries present. Uh, these uh, consultations, other distinguished guests. At the onset, my I, on behalf of my delegation and myself, express our gratitude to the government and people of the Republic of Kenya for the warm hospitality extended to us since our arrival in the beautiful city of Nairobi. Under the motto of Somali, which means Somalia at peace with itself and at peace with the world, His Excellency President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud has led a wide range of bilateral, regional, and multilateral initiatives to strengthen the existing ties between Somalia and its neighbors, among it is the Republic of Kenya. The Federal Government of Somalia is committed to promote and strengthen cooperation with its neighbors to improve security regulate migration frameworks, facilitate trade and investment. On July and September last year, the two presidents of Somalia announcing the strengthening of bilateral relations between the two countries and emphasizing the commitment to address security concerns along our shared borders. Further, two heads of state agreed on the opening of the border between the two countries in order to ease the movement of people and enhance trade in goods and services. Excellence, the cross-border challenges experienced by communities on both sides of the common border are too complex for one country to address. Borderland communities face numerous challenges, including insecurity, recurrent threats, human trafficking, illegal trade, and transnational crimes. However, by working together 
and leveraging our historical, linguistic, and bilateral ties between our two countries, citizens of, of both Somalia and Kenya can enjoy enhanced food security, improved infrastructure, increased exchange of goods and services, and overall sustainable, long-lasting peace. As we join hands in today's joint ministerial meeting, we give our commitment to promote cross-border cooperation between Somalia and Kenya. As we embark on this journey, we commit, we commit to set up modalities to implement the measures outlined in the declaration. Finally, today's consultation will provide a platform for ministers and high-level officials from our two countries to address common challenges, enhance border management and infrastructure and exchange ideas on border security and management. Excellence, rest assured that Somalia is committed to work with all partners to achieve the common goal of protecting our borderlands and implementing the time frame he sees uh, Kindiki mentioned before a while. That's the opening of the border buses of, from Mandera to uh, Kayunga on the Kenyan side from Bulahawa to Raskamboni from the Somali side. And also, the time frame of easing the visa measures so that the citizens of two countries can obtain easily and travel easily to their respective countries. With these remarks, I take the opportunity to commend the facilitation role of the International Organization for Migration, IOM, and other developing partners for our two countries.